talked about it again, but um, I, you'll have to, unfortunately, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, unfortunately, you'll have to put me in the category of people who do think that you're crazy. And well, not, not crazy Matt, across the board. Listen, Matt, listen. Not crazy across the board. I, I don't think you're nuts. I don't think you need to be locked up. I'm saying that on, on this subject, you've had experiences, and you, and I don't doubt that you had experiences. I'll take you at your word for that. The, mm -hmm. the problem is that you cannot tie those experiences to reality. People have hallucinations. Things, People, you can't prove a lot of things in reality, but they still exist. Yes. No, 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 no. Yeah. The, the things that we can demonstrate but, in reality are the things that exist. That's it. You and and they're the things, error. and they are, and, and, and Pat, I can't demonstrate error? No, no, you can't. You have, can't you never, have you never, have you never blown it, up a balloon? You can't prove that it's there. You can prove the outcome Pat, because we're living. Uh, Pat, you don't have to see it to demonstrate it. Seeing, but you have to see God, no, they exist. Pat, seeing something is not the only way to demonstrate it. And by the way, we can't, we can not only witness the effects of error, but you can see what's in air. And you've never blown up a balloon? That is an absolute, actual, tactile demonstration that air exists. Well, have you ever thought about when you, when you walk, when you die, you don't walk anymore? But when your spirit is inside you, you can walk and talk and breathe and do all that stuff? Yes. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, yeah. I, have, I have thought about that, and what I discovered in, in thinking and, you know, uh, researching that is that medical science understands, how, you know, how it is that our bodies can get up and walk around, and it has nothing to do with invisible spooks. Well, you know, I, I brought two people out of comas when the doctor said they weren't going to come out because of my understanding of the astral world, because I've traveled, I've asked you have, before. Do you have documentation yes. of this? Yeah. Why yeah. didn't you collect yeah. a million yeah. dollars from yeah. the James Randi Education? Yeah, James Foundation. Randi has a million dollars for you if you can prove that any of this crap is true. And I've had just it? about enough of this, Pat. You know, when the moment you can prove that any of this stuff that you're telling us about is actually true and not just the product of your lurid imagination, that's the point when you can write a book about it and not be just ripping people off you're by, right. by selling right. them I'm your imaginings and calling it real. Never died on the cross and saving it from anything. Excuse me? I, I, yeah, he never died on the cross. Because there's a principle. See, if you understand principles of life, this is according to your. This is according to your your you cannot, fantasy you that you had of seeing the sea. Out of your body and come what back. is wrong you with die. you, Pat? We're done. Why? Because you, 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 you're a wound. Well, you don't. You don't want to understand. Look, no. we, we've been very patient with you. We've been very patient with you, Pat, to ago, give us a single lot of time trying to really understand realities. And if you read in Ecclesiastes, it tells you just like a, it's a principle. Like if you have a baby, hey, you know what? Captain you Kirk asked cord, why God needed a starship. You're done. Wow. We we just don't we want to understand. We were very clearly. very patient with you, Pat. We gave you all the time in the world to give us a single reason why we should take the stuff you were telling us seriously. And instead of actually offering or attempting to understand, all you did was jump from. Well, I witnessed the crucifixion, and uh, come on now, who's not going to think you're like crazy when you start saying stuff like that? And, and the only evidence is that you experienced and it. And then I actually called, you, called her a loon, which, you know, I, I'll admit, there's a possibility that I'm wrong. There's a possibility that Pat's not a loon, but I'm going with my, uh, with my you know, carefully calculated reaction to the way that she pre presented herself. Yeah, Th you there's know, a very I mean, good chance that, that Pat... Um, is accurate and has accurate information and everything that she experiences is real and maps to real reality. Yeah. And there's also a chance that the schizophrenics and people who, who hallucinate um, are actually seeing a realm that you and I can't actually see, or right. at least I can't see. I don't know what you can see. Uh, but until it's demonstrated, um, there's no reason for anybody else to believe it. Right. And right. we are actually rationally justified in disregarding uh, your anecdotal, testimonial, personal experiences. Yeah, and not just us, but I mean, it, the, the, what really got me is she's she's written a book. Yeah. So she is going to take money from other people on the basis it of her book. fantasies. It may be a free book, a free ebook. We don't know. Okay. But if you are taking money for this, you should you, you should feel pretty. You're an irresponsible about that. kook if you're taking yeah. money for it. Uh, but that's all right. We'll we'll move on. We've got Aaron in Indianapolis, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Okay. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing fine. Um, 
just just to be clear from the outset, I am an atheist. I've read, you know, you know, I don't know how many books against the existence of God and about evolution and all that. Mm-hmm. And and um, it, and something really funny happened. Like about a week ago, I was at a birthday party, and the father, like the father and all the little boy, let's see, no, a grandfather of a boy who was turning four. Anyway, he. He was given a prayer, and he prayed to our Heavenly Father to bless the food and stuff. And it was like, I, had, I knew it wasn't based on anything real, but I still had this warm feeling go to my heart like I would back when I was a Christian. Sure. So it's like it was a conditioned response, or maybe I was empathizing with what they felt or something. Like, yeah. Do you, um, guys, do you guys still feel that? I mean, did, did you go through a period where you, you still felt things like that, or do you, like, go into a church and have the same feelings and then know it's not real? For me, uh, well, go ahead. Well, I never got that any more from church than I did from, say, music that I liked a lot, yeah. for example. Yeah. Okay. For me, it was the discovery um, of, of what Jeff just said. Because having had those types of feelings um, in, in prayer or in church while everybody's in song and things like that, and then discovering that I got those same or similar, had those same ex- similar experiences um, from listening to secular music that the church would be opposed to and from watching movies and stories. And Beth is here and she can tell you that uh, there are lots of things that, that will make me teary and give me an experience um, that just because they're beautiful and just because, you know, I am empathizing with other people. I'm not some misanthropic cynic. I am. I care about other people, and so, depending on and words have power, not in and of themselves. It's not you know these apps, but our usage of language can be incredibly powerful, and that's a, that's what I think preachers tap into. That's what statesmen tap into. Um, it's the reason why we have people that we like to listen to, because they speak to us not on some other metaphysical level but they speak to us in a way that really connects significantly. And that can happen whether you're in prayer or whether you're just in a, in a casual discussion. It's, it's all about being human and connecting with other humans. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of funny because as a guy was giving a prayer, it was like I thought that I should feel nothing. So my, I, when that started to happen, my logical mind was going, stop, it's not real, it's not real. So I, I don't know, maybe that was an irrational reaction. But like I didn't want to just like... I, I, think being, I, I, don't, I don't know why that happened. I think being conscious of what's going on um, is healthy for learning. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself. You felt oh, okay. something. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Enjoy the feelings, but you know, when you're deciding what is actually real and what's not, then you know, think about all the implications, and not just your feelings. Right. Right. I wasn't thinking. I mean. It, it just kind of struck me that it, it sort of reminded me that religious belief is kind of in a different part of the brain than the purely logical part, and, you know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Never mind. Well, I, I think when you start talking about parts of the brain, um, it, it might be a mistake. I mean, there are certain areas that we know contribute to different things, but um, religion movies, music, all art and entertainment, those, those things are trying to tap into all the parts of the brain that, that respond to that sort of thing. And good art and successful art is the one that taps into it the best. And I think one of the re- reasons that religion has continued to persist is because it offers, it not only offers people this hope, this false hope, that, as I would say, um, but it gives them the emotional experience and the camaraderie and the fellowship um, that we all, or most of us, tend to enjoy. Okay, I think that'll. Well, thanks. Cool. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. Do you have something to add on that? Yeah, I think I'm especially um, uh, uh, this is issue of you know um, art versus uh, religion is especially important to me because I'm I'm an artist and I'm a game designer and I make my living. Um, you know, uh, entertaining people with fantasy. And it's important to me that I do that responsibly and not take advantage of people and say, not, well, not only does this, you know, this, uh, this scene that I've drawn uh, 
you know, evoke feelings in you, but it's actually true. Yeah. There's something really going, no, it's a picture. It's an idea. And um, so when I, you know, when I hear folks like Pat, <laughs> uh, it, who's, who blurred that line, uh, it, it really bugs me. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's one thing, I mean, of course, anybody has the right to live by the dictates of their conscience, and, you know, we're not saying uh, that, that you, you can't believe whatever your conscience dictates. It's just, you know, we'd, we'd prefer to live in a world where people are largely rational and would begin, you know, would care more about whether or not their beliefs are true and how they go about demonstrating them. I, I, I agree that everybody has the right to believe what they want. What I, where I think they cross the line is when they take a thing they can't actually demonstrate is true and then market that. That is not them individually believing what they believe. Right. That's them irresponsibly taking advantage of others. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that's called fraud. They become a, an advocate uh, without justification, and yeah. therefore they are subject and, and deserve right. Ca criticism. Right. It's a fine point, but an important one. So we get AJ in Philadelphia. How are you? How you doing, Matt? I'm talking to you, aren't I? That's Matt and Jeff, yeah. Hey, uh, actually, yeah, Jeff, I haven't heard uh, about you, uh, nothing personal, but Matt, uh, my cousin of mine, is a huge fan of yours, mm -hmm. and he wanted me to give you a call and, and have a discussion with you about uh, this particular topic. Um, he's a, a hardcore atheist, if you will, um, and we've had many weeks and months of discussions about, about God and how I rationalize it. Um, and I, I think I'm right. I think he's... Uh, I think he's he's being short-sighted, and uh, that's why uh, I'm calling you now. Um, Are you admitting that you rationalize, or was that just his word for it? No, he's saying I'm not I'm not being rational, or it, it doesn't make quite sense. It's, uh, he's saying it's circular in reasoning. And uh, now let me explain to you my uh, my understanding of God. I think you're right, and I 